On Tuesday, August 5th, this is BTV Chinese channel's Where is Beeface? I'm Michael in New York. Let's first look at the 24-hour data headlines in the crypto world. Yesterday, Bitcoin fell below the $50,000 mark twice during the day, reaching a low of $49,103.98 USD, with a 24-hour decline expanding to 18.2%. Initially, the market was worried that Bitcoin would continue to drop after the US stock market opened in the evening, but instead, it started to rise after 9.30. By noon today, Bitcoin had climbed back above $55,000 USD, and Ethereum also returned to around the $2,500 USD mark. So now, the Bitcoin market lacks internal demand and capital to drive the market, mainly relying on funds brought in by traditional Web 2.0 institutions. Therefore, the recent macro situation has been turbulent and a global economic. Recession seems to have become the main theme of the market. Additionally, local conflicts in Europe and the Middle East are becoming increasingly intense. As a result, in the near future, global venture capital firms' funds are expected to enter a short-term risk aversion and contraction cycle, and improvement will likely only occur after interest rate cuts. All right, let's take another look at the net position on exchanges over the past two weeks, which have been continuously falling within the positive range. The market fear and greed index hit a low of 26 yesterday. So why are net positions still in the positive range, indicating more bullish users? Because the short-term drop was too fast and too sharp, the market hasn't had time to react. By the time it does, it's already in the low price range. So, although there are panic-driven sell-offs at this time, most people's first reaction is to quickly buy the dip, replenish their positions, or even open long positions. Therefore, the exchange's net position remain positive. There is only a slight downward trend, still maintaining in the positive rate range. However, we need to be cautious that after the price rebounds, the market might short sell. Therefore, the short-term large-scale capital injection market cannot quickly stabilize everyone's emotions. The market may continue to fluctuate or experience sharp drops for a while. However, with the price between $48,000 and $52,000, this is already the first bottoming range. If Bitcoin falls to around the $42,000 mining cost, this would be considered an epic low. An epic mining disaster has occurred. So going all in and lying flat while waiting for the bull market to return in 2025 might just be the best investment strategy. All right, please turn on the little bell and like us as we help you sort through the craziest news in the crypto, blockchain, and mining circles over the past 24 hours in the Web3 world. The big topic these days is, of course, the massive crash. I'm currently in New York, and this week is Stanford University's Blockchain Week, where many industry and academic elites are gathering to discuss the future of the Web3 world. There's a saying that rising prices cure all ills, right? It doesn't just cure the problems of the retail investors. Sometimes, even industry insiders and elites during the downturn, people at the summit were somewhat disheartened. Everyone was discussing who was responsible for this crash. If we were to analyze the reasons for the downturn, I believe that after the crash, there will be various analyses, data, and summaries. But before the crash, no one knew. If we have to summarize and pinpoint a reason, is that network monitoring data showed a wallet marked as belonging to the US government's Silk Road Judicial Department transferred 29,000 bitcoins. 800 bitcoins were transferred to a new address with no label or transaction history. Subsequently, this address split the amount into two transactions, one with 19,800 bitcoins and another with 10,000 bitcoins sent to two different addresses. One of these addresses was detected as a third-party custodian, suggesting that the 19,800 bitcoins might be dumped. So, after this transaction was completed, bitcoin immediately fell below $50,000 facing massive sell-offs. The on-chain transaction volume has significantly increased over the past two days. In the past 24 hours, the total Bitcoin holdings amount was $28.276 billion, down 12.51%, while the trading volume was $114.16 billion, up 111%. So after a few days of market slaughter, I want to ask everyone, do you still have confidence in the crypto market? ETF publisher Bitwise founder Matt Haugen confidently said that based on history, this sell-off is a good time to buy. Matt Haugen mentioned that in the past few days, the global capital market has plummeted. On August 5th, the Nikkei index hit its worst day since 1987. The U.S. stock market plummeted and the VIX volatility rises 100 percent. Bitcoin falls 20 percent. Most cryptocurrency investors are experiencing brutal emotional swings, including fear and despair. However, with more than six years of full-time cryptocurrency management experience, he saw another opportunity, and Trump also spoke out about the big sell-off.
It's something they shouldn't be doing because they should be trying to build it. So if we don't do it, China's doing it, other places are doing it, and they're doing it anyway. Yeah. And it's a very modern uh, currency. It's a very modern form. And I know a lot of very good people that are really into that world. We should thank President Trump for coming out in time to call for a stop loss. We all hope Trump can successfully run for re-election and bring real policy support for cryptocurrencies. Facing this crash, many friends from traditional Web2 industries called me, asking if Michael is okay. I just love their naivety, right? Do you all remember March 12th, 2020? The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell to 2,353 points. Tech stocks were in free fall. The broader market was in free fall and commodities were plummeting. Among all assets, Bitcoin performed the worst, dropping directly from $12,000 to around $3,000. So what do you call this? A minor setback, right? For seasoned investors, a 20 to 30% drop is just a small fry. As one expert said, I haven't lost anything because all my coins are still there. I don't care how much they're worth. As for how much it's worth, we really don't care. So you see, on March 12, 2020, many people thought the crypto market would take a long time to recover and that it would be very difficult to regain its vitality. But now, it seems, that crash was not only not a disaster, but also the best buying opportunity in Bitcoin's 10-year history because Bitcoin's fundamentals hadn't changed at all. And today, you see the Japanese stock market crashing, the Israel-Iran conflict on the brink of breaking out, and geopolitical tensions are extremely high. All these geopolitical threats and bearish outlooks for the future will create a perfect scenario for the rise of Bitcoin and digital assets. Last week, VC Rate released their second quarter financial report. Their software business is in a lost state, and I'm not sure if the software business is still their main business. The annual revenue was $1.1 billion, a 7.5% increase, but the loss was $17.8 million. However, in terms of Bitcoin, they made a steady profit. MicroStrategy now holds a total of 226,500 Bitcoins, with an average purchase cost of $36,800, totaling $8.34 billion in value. The total return on Bitcoin is 12.2%, with a target growth of 4% to 8% over the next three years. It can be said that among all of VC Rate's businesses, Bitcoin has always been the most prominent and attractive. MicroStrategy recently submitted a 20. The company plans to issue Class A shares to raise approximately 20. The $100 million will be used for general corporate purposes, including the acquisition of Bitcoin and working capital, and to repurchase or repay debts according to market conditions. However, MicroStrategy still failed to withstand the ruthless U.S. stock market and fell more than 23% at the opening and 220-6500 Bitcoin. At the current price of 52700 calculate the approximation 119 At the same time, MicroStrategy. The total market value is currently $25.7 billion. Ours. This event is a perfect opportunity to increase your Bitcoin holdings and be part of a larger movement towards decentralized finance. By participating, you are not only doubling your holdings, but also supporting the broader adoption of Bitcoin and helping to build a more secure and transparent financial system. Michael Saylor can be considered the most dedicated Bitcoin bull in the crypto world. As everyone knows, on June 13th last year, he issued $500 million in convertible notes through a private placement by the company, and a day later, it surged to $700 million. What was the purpose? To raise cash, to accumulate Bitcoin. So during this major crash, MicroStrategy didn't sell a single Bitcoin, truly deserving of the title of a die-hard bull. All right, welcome back. This is the Bitcoin TV Chinese channel, and I'm Michael. On July 31st, Galaxy released a 2024 Bitcoin mining year-end report, bringing the current mining market back into the spotlight for discussion. As you know, with Bitcoin's hash rate hitting a historic low, the mining difficulty has dropped 10% from its peak of 88.1, reaching the lowest point of 79, 5T since the halving in July. At the same time, in the first quarter of 2024, publicly listed mining companies raised a total of $1.8 billion in equity, which is quite substantial, setting a three-year record for fundraising. So this report presents a thriving picture of the mining industry and optimistically predicts that capital markets may return to mining in the second half of 2024 and 2025. Will the spring of mining come again? In the past, mining always faced various criticisms from environmentalists, but with the use of clean energy, the situation has started to change. 
This weekend, OMI will lead our members to various mining sites in North America to explore the possibility of conducting mining operations in the United States. In the first quarter of 2024, listed mining companies raised a total of $1.8 billion in equity, setting a record for the highest amount raised in a single quarter in the past three years. AI and HPC with the support of the latest generation of Bitcoin mining machines, after removing the cost of electricity, each megawatt has nearly 85 dollars, with a gross profit margin of $100 billion facing such an exaggerated computing scale, more hybrid mining companies will emerge in the future. In a recent interview with Dwarkesh Podcast, Mark Zuckerberg pointed out that there are no gigawatt data centers yet, and the key now is to ensure energy, which is the biggest bottleneck in the competition for AI supercomputers. We believe that energy generation at the edge, whether it's solar, whether it's um, burning methane gas uh, on landfills, or, or whatever the energy source may be, uh, is a way that this is going to work in the future. As Fred Thiel mentioned, traditional mining companies have a very high demand for energy. You need to understand that every cent decrease in electricity costs represents an increase in mining profits. However, electricity costs in the United States just won't come down. It's compliant, it's safe, it's stable, but the electricity costs are high, possibly as high as 0.8 cents or 0.7 cents and above. So now, the integration of AI and HPC with traditional Bitcoin mining is considered a new attempt in the mining sector. It could mean that many mining operations will look to leverage powerful new economies to reduce sensitivity to electricity costs. Of course, so far, the mining industry is still dominated by electricity. Whoever has cheaper electricity holds the absolute high ground in mining. All right. Following the release of the non-farm employment data from the United States, the three major U.S. stock indices plummeted, and the stock markets in Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Japan, and South Korea also experienced significant drops. The total market value of cryptocurrencies fell below the $2 trillion mark for the first time. Today, the Taiwan stock market joined the fray as well, affected by the escalating conflict between Israel and Iran and the situation in the Middle East, along with concerns about a U.S. economic recession. The Taiwan stock market plunged over 1800 points today, breaking four records in one go. The largest intraday drop in a single day, the largest single day closing drop, and TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, even hit the limit down at one point. Facing this global stock market crash, Taiwan's Minister of Economic Affairs, Guo Zhehui, also issued a warning, stating that the fundamentals of our listed companies are quite resilient, and investors must face this situation with prudence and rationality. <laughs> 经营基本面方面呢，相当的呃强韧，投资人必须审慎理性的去面对。just as the Taiwan stock market was hit hard, a Taiwanese crypto exchange called Rybit suddenly announced the suspension of services. Rybit issued a detailed announcement stating that based on market transformation considerations, the company starting from August 23, 2024, the platform services for existing individual users will be suspended, including deposits and withdrawals of new Taiwan dollars and virtual currencies and other platforms services. However, the company will continue to provide services to corporate customers. August, early morning of the 23rd after Zero Del Wow, Rybit will take a snapshot of all user balances. If there are assets that have not been transferred out, the company will inform you of the subsequent withdrawal method via email and perform manual liquidation operations. It may not be possible to withdraw funds immediately, so it is recommended to withdraw funds or coins within the deadline. Rabbit received a fine of 1.02 million new Taiwan dollars from the Taiwan Financial Supervisory Commission on August 1st for violating anti-money laundering laws and personal data collection regulations. Is the current withdrawal of individual users related to this? We are not quite sure, but the current situation in Taiwan is that the Taiwan stock market is experiencing an outflow of funds and Taiwan's economy is somewhat affected. Stabilizing the situation seems to be the trend now. Taiwanese investors are eagerly anticipating the National Stabilization Fund to step in and rescue the market, stabilizing public sentiment I saw a post analyzing things for everyone. Take a look and see if you agree with what it says. It says that capital tells you not to drink overnight tea, but iced tea can be drunk even after 12 months. It says not to eat overnight food, but what about pre-made food? We can't avoid it for 365 days a year. We're always eating it. It says capital can make people lose their conscience. $3 can buy a good review. $30 can make a delivery guy bring you food in freezing weather. $300 can make someone's father carry cement up 30 floors. And $3,000 can make someone give up their daughter they've raised for 18 years. Sitting obedient 
immediately next to you. 300,000 can easily end your true love. So when people attribute all these social problems to capital, what is that called? That is called a lack of common sense and logic. Sometimes capitalists are quite endearing. They have to pay wages, bear the pressure of loans, and face the risk of company bankruptcy. If the company goes bankrupt, employees don't care, so every month they still have to pay employees on time. Without the efforts of capitalists, where would your salary come from? So everyone shouldn't place all the blame on capital. While capital can sometimes do harm, compared to the harm of power, it leaves you with nowhere to hide. All right, you can like this post now. It includes all the membership benefits. We hope to lead all our members to gradually become wealthy during this bull market, increasing our Bitcoin holdings. See you tomorrow.